Okay, what is up everybody? I hope all of you are doing really well. For those of you that don't know, I'm Sean Kitching and I make loads of travel videos and I wanted to announce something super exciting which is this new like little how to make travel video series that I'm gonna be doing on my YouTube channel from now on. I did like a few of them recently and a lot of you seem to really enjoy them so I thought I would do a whole bunch more and offer you guys some super sweet valuable travel video like hacks and tutorials and tips and things that I found really useful. This is the first one of those. We're gonna be covering some really cool editing tips. We're actually putting together a really cool travel plan for pretty soon so I thought I'd work on these until that happens and then we're gonna be going like full force with the travel videos and making some super dope like crazy travel videos it's gonna be amazing I can't wait to tell you guys more about it but for now I'm gonna talk about how you guys can step up your travel videos with some really cool travel video editing tips so let's go <laughs> tip I wanted to talk about is something that may seem basic but I see it in way too many people's edits when they're first starting out with videos and that is sticking to a flow and a motion of like the camera direction and angle when you are editing and what I mean by that is a good example is with drone clips you'll see someone using a shot of a drone for example flying forward and then the drone stops flying forward but the clip isn't cut before that motion stops. The way I like to do it at least is by making sure I cut before any adjustment or a change in motion is made in the clip and it just gives the whole thing like a way more fluid feeling and like a better flow when you put all the clips together like that. So make sure you cut the clip before it like kind of ends or you readjust or re-angle your camera or anything like that. Editing tip number two is giving your scene context. So a good rule to kind of stick to, especially if you're a beginner, is to start with big establishing shots and then move closer in into like medium shots of the actual scene and what you're trying to cover and then you can go even further in into like the fine details and like some really cool things that you want to highlight and show. So for example if you got some people running around on a beach you might want to start your edit by having some really big drone shots and then you can kind of show your audience where the scene is kind of going to take place and they can have a better idea of where these people are and then you can punch into the medium shots showing the actual subjects if they are people or whatever they are then you can show a bit of that and then you can also even punch further in to like some very close up details to give the scene even more of like a rich depth to it. That's something that really helps out with editing and it's a nice easy thing that you can stick to to make sure that your scenes kind of play out naturally and organically. Okay so tip number three is to cut in motion and this is especially effective if you guys are busy editing a scene that's a bit more fast paced and there's action like some cliff jumping or some running or like riding bikes or something that's more fast paced this is going to make it feel even more fast paced and it's going to really like make it pop so what I mean by this is instead of playing out the full clip for example if someone jumps off of a cliff you don't have to start the clip from before the jump even begins and then end it only once they've hit the water. It works really nice and adds a really nice flow to the edit if you almost cut the clip mid-action so once the person has finished the most important part of the cliff jump then you cut it right there and then you move on to the next scene that is also already like starting. So you don't have these like little dead spots where there's not much happening or the person who's watching the clip is already kind of figured out what's going on. As soon as they have figured out what's going on, you already cut and it's onto the next clip and their brain has to figure out what's going on in that one. And then before it gets boring and there's a dead spot, it cuts and it goes to the next one. And it's a nice way of keeping people's attention and it also makes the edit just move quite nice and fast if it is like a fast paced edit.
Tip number four is something that I feel like makes the hugest difference from like a pretty good travel video to an absolutely amazing travel video and that is cutting to music properly. Everybody knows how to cut to music where they cut on the beat and you can change your clips right on the like kick or snare of the backing song that you're gonna be using. What you wanna try to do is match the movements and the actions going on in the clips to fit with the music and the sounds that are happening in the music as well. So yes, cut on the beats, but in between those cuts and in between the beats, there's a whole lot of other sounds going on. And if you can start to match all the movement and the actions that are going on in the video to those sounds, that's when it really starts to like come alive. And you can notice a huge difference when you start to like kind of get that right. In this little B-roll section that I'm gonna play now, just notice how a lot of the actions and the movements that are taking place in the video are also matching the music as well as the clips being cut on the beat. Tip number five when you're editing your travel videos. This one is something that I find really hard. I still struggle with it these days and it's taken me a really long time to like even just get a little bit better at it. Not being attached to certain clips when you're editing. So just because you might have spent a lot of time filming that clip or getting that clip or you have to work really hard for that clip, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to better your video in the end. When you're putting together your edit, if that clip doesn't really fit, just throw it out, delete it, even like you have to just be ruthless, don't be attached to the clips even if you really like them. If you think about it from the viewer's perspective, they have no idea how hard you worked for that clip and they're not going to have any more appreciation for that clip if it detracts from the final edit, so you just gotta be ruthless, throw the clip out if it's not bettering your overall edit, doesn't matter how hard you worked on getting it. Tip number six for editing your travel videos is sound design. I've noticed people have been talking about sound design quite a lot recently, which is really cool, but I've also noticed that a lot of people are still not implementing this into their travel videos, so I thought I would just briefly touch on it again and show you guys these two demo clips and give you a bit of an idea of how much more rich and more live your clip becomes by just adding some simple sound design behind it and how it really like pulls the viewer into that scene and makes them feel like they were actually there rather than kind of just watching a video with like a track slapped over it. Here's the one with no sound design. And then here is the same sequence with some simple sound design added in the background. You can really notice how much more rich and immersed the viewer is on the one with sound design. So take the extra time, add the sound design to your guys' travel videos from now on. It makes the hugest difference. Okay, tip number seven for editing your travel videos is color grading. I'm sure you guys know about color grading by now. You can download thousands of LUTs for free all over the internet. Um, if you don't know what color grading or LUTs are, just do a Google search or find some cool tutorials here on YouTube. I just briefly wanted to touch on it and show you guys the difference. So here's a clip with no color grade and here you can see as I apply the color grade how much more the clip comes to life and how much more it pops. This is a really fun part of the editing where you can get really creative and it's really all down to preference. But something you should be aware of is make sure that the color grade that you're adding to your video fits with it and enhances it and adds to the story and what I mean by that is for instance if you have some people running around at sunset 
on a beach on a summer's day or something like that. I just always use these kind of examples because it's the things that I like to film. <laughs> but if you have that sort of clip, make sure not to add like a really cold and blue color grade. Make sure you use a really warm color grade and pop out that sunset even more summery and even more beachy than it already was. Kind of go wild with the color grade. It's a really fun part of creating travel videos and one of my favorite parts of the editing process. Those are all of the editing tips that I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope they'll help with some of your up and coming travel videos. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this is the first of many of a little mini series that I'm gonna be doing on this channel. So if you guys did enjoy this one, make sure to hit subscribe, like, hit the bell, all that YouTube good stuff. It really does help and I really do appreciate it. If you guys would like to know any of the gear that I used to make this video, go check it out in the description. It's always linked down below with Amazon links and it helps me out if you click on them anywhere. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. The next one's really exciting, so stay tuned for that one. Peace.